So of all the bits that I have to do for the S600, one of the least critical ones being able to drive it is the horn. So I'm going to work on that next. So I'm guessing this will just be a matter of cleaning it up. First test will be see if it actually works. I've got my power supply set to 12 volts. And it doesn't work. Unless it goes this way. No? Okay, maybe this will be harder to fix than I thought. Um, the fact that if this was a short, this would click and tell me that it's gone to overload, and it hasn't, which means this is open circuit. So we'll start pulling it apart, see what it looks like inside. So it'll be interesting to see how rusty everything is. Everything has like surface rust on it, but it doesn't look like it's got like proper internal destroying things level of rust. First thing to take off is this little badge. All these little badges are like riveted on. This one has little tiny screws, which is nice, rather than having to, oh, rather than having to break rivets. Now I'm not sure if this is a factory horn. There seems to be a lot of discussion on the like forums on what the factory horns were because they're also optional ones. So I've got no idea whether this is factory or not, but it is definitely period correct at least. So I had a bit of trouble getting these bottom two out. For some reason, I don't know if you can see it, this bottom mount is like all thin bits of sheet metal pressed together. I'm not sure why it's made like that, but whatever. So... Uh, oh, there's no... Hmm. Yeah, okay, so it's just... <clears throat> so my camera battery just gave up. What I was saying was, I expected wires going from this to here, but it looks like everything is contained in the bottom portion. The way this works is pretty simple. There's a magnet here, an electromagnet, so if you put power through this coil of wire, it turns on, and when you turn off, it's off. And there's this plate on the bottom here, and so what happens is when the magnet turns on, it deflects this plate down, which puts out a sound wave. What happens is this little tab at the end here, once that's down, it pushes on this little tab here, which actually turns the magnet off and it springs back up. And so basically it just sits there and vibrates backwards and forwards like a speaker making a horn sound. This little thing here is a diode which is kind of like a one-way valve for electricity and the reason you need that in there is this ignition coil, uh, this horn coil or magnet coil, it works like ignition coil as well. So the ignition coil, you put power in a coil of wire, it builds up a magnetic field. When you take the power away the field collapses and puts out a huge burst of energy. So what this diode does is it lets electricity in and it doesn't let it back out. So it stops that collapsing field every time it beeps from going back in the electrics. Pretty sure that's what it's for anyway. Don't quote me, but it's probably close enough. So one thing I did notice is this space in here is all mega full of stuff. So we'll clear that out and we'll start poking this with the multimeter. The initial test with it between the two pins is completely open circuit. It should beep. So we also got a broken wire, a broken connection. Hopefully it's not the diode or the magnet. Hopefully it's something simple. So I've got the multimeter here. It's set to continuity. So when there's a connection, it beeps. Hopefully you can hear that. So there's a pin here. Oh, actually, I'll just put on this bit of wire. So if I go from this piece of wire, we'll follow the gray one over to here. That's connected. We'll get this yellow one. Oh wait, no, this yellow one. So we'll go from there along to where this goes. That's connected other side of the diode. Now this is a one-way valve, so that's not connected. But if I put them around this way, so electricity is going the other way, it's connected. So that's connected. Now the next place that ends up is over here. Wait. Which is connected as well, if I can get the, mod the lead in the right place. That seems like it's okay. This wire here, check it down to the coil. It's kind of hard to see what I'm doing with the camera in the way, but that might be our problem. The power to the bottom side of the magnet is reading not connected. Further investigation is required. So I think I'm just going to take this um, the little spring connection part out of it so I can sort of get a better look of where all the wires go. Nothing looks particularly corroded inside so it should be ugh, should be easy enough to get apart. Just looking at this now, this other screw holds this other piece on there's actually a spring under there, so I think this screw might do something along the lines of adjust adjust how it rings, like adjust the sound it makes, or adjust how quickly it like re goes. I might not pull it out just yet. So after looking at it a bit more closely, 
the spot I was testing this wasn't a good spot. It does actually have a connection. So what I might do is this little contact here that opens and closes. I might try to open it and then get a piece of sandpaper in there and clear the contact off. Okay, it's got a harder grip than I thought. I'll just feed this in and out a few times on each side. Oh, they should definitely be making a good connection now. We'll try to put power to it again, see if anything happens. Ready? Whoa, hey, that actually did something that time. Alright, let's put the top cover back on it. Because remember, we need the top cover magnet to come down and push that little button. We'll chuck the cover on it and see if it makes a noise. We've got the top cover back on it. Ready? Oh, can you hear that? kind of doing it. It sounds like it's pulling the magnet down. Oh, I bet you this piece here slides separately. And there's a spring under there. Alright, I'm going to take this off, clean underneath it, and then see if it works again. I bet you this slides separately and this whole thing doesn't have to deflect. Because I thought this was a bit thick to be bending backwards and forwards. This looks pretty rusty. I put some penetrating on it, and a penetrating oil on it, not that long ago. Oh no, that was... Easy enough. Yeah, I reckon this is supposed to slide up and down. Oh, yeah, okay, so this here is called a Bellevue washer. And if you can see it, it's like concave or convex, depending which way you look at it. And it's like a little, a little snap spring. So I reckon this is all supposed to move separately. Ooh, spiders. Oh, actually, I bet you we have to adjust this. So just thinking about the way this is put together inside, to reduce the travel that it needs to open, I need to unscrew this. Hopefully this actually turns, it's pretty rusty, oh yeah, there we go. I'll give it one turn, then we'll try it. See if that's done anything. Nope. Ah, see now I've gone too far because it does nothing. So I think this is the fine adjustment for how much power it, like, how much the magnet moves. Yeah. <coughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> sounds super lame. It also sounds funny because it's all vibrating. So, now that it works, I'm going to pull the case apart. Take the electronics out and we'll clean all the rust and everything off it. So this is probably a little bit harder to take apart than it needs to be. It looks like they've actually assembled it and then soldered it together. So I'm going to unsolder the wires off the connections. I find with super old solder than like this, well not even this old, like anything from like mm, the 90s, like 20 years old, this is 60s, but what I find is that if you add some new solder to the old stuff, it makes the old stuff like melt easier. It doesn't really make any sense, but it, it works. So, try heat it up. We'll add some other stuff in there while we're going. I should probably take a photo of this before I take it apart, but we'll remember how it goes together. So getting this apart will be a bit hard because we've got to remove our wires, and the wires are attached to the magnet coil, and the irons that the magnet is wrapped around are riveted into the body. So we're gonna have to take it apart somehow. Looking at it, it looks like what they've done is slipped the coil of magnet winding over it and then bent these little tabs. So I'll undo all the screws, hopefully remove the little tab spring thing and then be able to bend these tabs up and slide the coil and everything off in one go. We'll have to readjust our adjusting screw or afterwards obviously as well. If any people from the S600 page are watching this, there's always, I always see people talking about like the optional twin horn and the optional like the factory horn and the horn from this brand and that's not a factory bracket and this is factory and this one's not. Is this an original horn or not? Because it's definitely period correct. We'll see what this actually says once I clean up the brand tag. But yeah, it'd be cool to know if it's an original one or if someone's like upgraded it in the past. Hopefully pulling this apart is not a mistake because I'm going to be a little bit upset if this gets broken. Oh yes, it's it's coming. So be sure to get all the electronics out in one piece. Yeah, look at that. Now this is ready to be sandblasted and cleaned up. 
So one thing I never understood when I was younger, I'd see electromagnets like this and I'd get a copper wire and strip all the insulation off it and wind it together and could never work out why my magnets didn't work. This stuff that looks like bare copper wire is actually copper wire with um, like a clear coat on it. It's got, what's it called, lacquer. It's got lacquer on it. It's lacquered copper windings. So the closer you can get the copper windings together, the better the magnet works, which is why they use lacquered copper instead of rubber coated copper. But yeah, I could never work that out when I was younger. I was like, why do all my magnets not work? And they just get really hot and don't do anything. It's because I was shorting it out because, yeah, it wasn't the right wire. So that's why they always look like bare wire, but they're actually not. Now the stuff that I have in here at the moment is um, glass beads. You can see they're like, they're white. So normally glass beads are for polishing aluminium because I had it in here from when I was doing the master cylinders. They're not for removing paint and rust, but we'll give it a go. I think it'll just be really slow, but should still be faster than changing over all the sand just for this small part. So here are our bits out of the sandblaster. There's a bit of like sort of pitted corrosion on it. It's not too bad, but there's not really much we can do about that. Looking at the screws that came out of this, I thought they might have been the yellow zinc plated ones, but it looks like they're all painted black. So I'm going to give the whole thing a coat of black paint. While that's drying, we'll start working on the little badge. Alright, so the next bit I'll look at, hopefully it's savable. This is the little badge off the front with the brand on it. It's got a kink in it. We'll see if we can tap it down flat again. I don't want to tap it too hard because the letters are like embossed into it. So if we work on it too much, like the more we play with it, the more the letters are going to disappear. But we do have to get it flat at least. Normally you chuck a piece of wood under something like this because my bench has got like a piece of fiberboard on top of it. That would be close enough. So what I'm doing at the moment is just trying to take the dent out of it, like the crease. So I'm using the handle of this hammer because it's got a round profile to it. And I'm using the round profile. So if I want to hit this edge down, if I lift it like this, there's a gap here now. And I can hammer it down over that gap. And so by rocking it backwards and forwards where I need it, I can slowly try and work the crease out of it. It's definitely never going to be perfect because I don't want to go too far because it will remove the writing out of it. But I'll work it for a little bit and see if I can get it looking a bit flatter. Okay, so I think it's about as flat as I'm going to get it. I'm just going to give it a very light brush over with some scotch Brite and try and remove some of the corrosion off the top of it. I've just put some WD-40 on it to help up because the lubricant. WD-40 also stops the scotch Brite from clogging up because it keeps washing the, um, like the shavings away. So I'm pretty sure the way this would have been made in the factory is they would have had like a stencil with the logo on it. And then the stencil would have been placed over it and they use an acid to etch away the stuff that's not covered by the stencil, leaving this raised lettering. So we should be able to scrub it fairly well without actually removing the letters because they're like etched into the brass. So after scrubbing it with the scotch Brite, it's looking pretty good. You can actually read it now. It's a Mitsuba horn, 12 volt, 3 amp, 110 decibels. So I might just do some googling, see if I can work out how old it is or if it's original. The next thing I'm going to do is get some car polish and see if we can buff it to have a good shine on it. Okay, so all the bits have had overnight to dry. I'm going to start putting the electronics back in it. So now that all the internals are back in place, we can solder the wires back onto the connectors. Cool, that looks good. Now, I'm not sure with the original one, I was trying to find pictures online. There was traces of maybe a gasket around here, which I guess would make sense to keep water and stuff out of it. But I couldn't tell if it was like a gasket or if it was rubber sealant. So I don't have any gasket paper, so I'm going to put some um, RTV on it. And hopefully that'll... It'll keep it waterproof, I'm just not sure if it will make the right sound, but if I hear like a metal buzzing noise, then I know I need to put a gasket in there. So, we'll put it together with some sealant and hope that's alright. Now, reassembling this portion of it, this has to be orientated correctly, because like we saw before, this little tab pushes on the little spring contact, but this only bolts down in certain positions, so I think the easiest way to do it, I've just pointed the tab directly at one of the screw holes, which the screw hole matches up with where the little tab is, so hopefully that ends up lining up okay. As far as cleaning up the screws and everything, 
I um, haven't decided if I want to zinc plate them because I have a zinc plating kit but it's a fair bit of work or if I want to just spray them black again so I'm just putting the nuts back on as is but looking at pictures online it looks like these horns at the factory were assembled and then painted so all the screws are just painted black so I think I'm probably going to go with that we'll spray it once I've finished reassembling it the only reason I haven't painted the screws first is there's no point painting them and doing them up because all the paint gets chipped off them which is I think half the reason they paint stuff like this at the factory after it's assembled but we'll screw it together I'll give it a test and do electronics and stuff and then paint it because the paint takes overnight to dry so probably won't see the last bit of paint in this video because I'm going to finish the video now but we'll get it painted in the future well in the future I mean the second I turn the camera off <laughs> Okay, so I've given it a quick coat just because I didn't like looking at the rusty screws. But we can put the last bit on now. Once again, looking at pictures of these horns online, some of them, this little plate, seems like it's painted green, and then some of them seems like it's bare brass like this. So I'm not sure which one's which, but brass is easier, so it's brass. <laughs> cool. Well, it's definitely an improvement over how it looked when I pulled it out of the box. Let's plug it in and adjust the adjustment screw on the back. Okay, so we'll turn this on. We're on 12 volts. Ignore this. That, that doesn't work. Um, odds getting it right on the first try, pretty much zero. But yeah, nothing happened. So it didn't click or make a noise. So I'm guessing that means the pads are too close together. So we'll tighten it to bring the pad down a bit. For turn... Oh wait, no, if it's clicking and just holding it needs to go back the other way. And then a quarterback. Nope. Hey, it's better. <laughs> I wonder if adjusting this is going to like change the tone of it. We'll give it a little bit, see what happens. Oh, that sounds worse. It's louder. Oh, it's louder again. Louder again. Too much. When was the last time you adjusted your horn? Didn't even know horns had adjustment, but apparently they do. Or maybe only ones from the 60s do. I don't know. Whoa, a bit more. Wait, wrong way. One nice new looking S600 horn. So I don't have much more to say about that. I'll start working on the next bit. And if you want to see more videos getting the S600 fixed up, subscribe. And you have to press the bell thing or YouTube's like you didn't actually want to subscribe. Must have been a mistake. And I'll see everybody on the next video.